Okay, this video we're going to use to do a walkthrough of the collection and just kind of showcase uh, the collection as a whole. Uh, it's being taken because we had somebody contact us through our website asking us to do a walkthrough video. So instead of spending so much time on an individual clock, just kind of giving you an eye as if you're here and able to walk through the collection. So we're going to start by doing a video here in our main clock room. This room houses uh, about half of the collection. There's 35 clocks here in the room. So it's not going to cover all of them, but it's definitely going to give you a very good overview uh, of what's part of this collection and, and hopefully just an appreciation for the Black Forest clock. It's, it, it clearly is much more than just a cuckoo clock and, and the clocks made in the Black Forest really cover such a wide variety of different pieces. We're not going to spend a lot of time on each individual clock. Just because the sheer numbers, if we do, the video is going to be way too long. But we're going to quickly just kind of point out each clock, maybe do some in groups. We're not going to set them off. But it definitely is worth mentioning here that most of the clocks in this room, we've done individual videos on. So for those clocks, if you want to see them in action or hear them play or, or learn more about them, you have a couple options. You could go to our website, which is blackforestclocks.org, and you could scroll through our archives, through the museum link. And that goes back page after page after page of clocks. All the clocks that we have uh, in the museum section and on the website are clocks that we own. They're clocks that are here. And you're welcome to send a request through if you want additional details on any clock that you see. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. It can be accessed through the main page of our website on blackforestclocks.org. And you can access all the videos and you can see most of these clocks uh, in detail and in action. So we're going to move along and just kind of go through the clocks in the room and, uh, and hopefully you enjoy the video. Uh, the first clock here at the end, it's a shield clock made in the Black Forest in the early part of the 19th century. And the clock plays uh, six musical tunes on a rank of bells. And you can see there's a cutout in the shield which allows the bells and the hammers to be seen. And uh, as the clock plays, the hammers are struck. Uh, the hammers strike the bells, and the musical tune is reproduced. The next clock is a butcher clock. Uh, this clock's also on our website. You can see a video of it. But the butcher strikes the cow in the head with an axe in sequence with the strike to the clock. So just a fantastic uh, automation clock. Uh, really shows uh, just how creative the Black Forest clock makers were. Here we have a snap clock. It's also known as a schnapper. Uh, the figure on the top, his eyes move left to right with the swing of the pendulum. And as the clock strikes, the mouth opens and closes and, and snaps in sequence with the strike to the bell. And that clock was made about 1820, rope drive, wood spindle, and the trains are front to back. So just a great clock, uh, really in original condition. Another shield automa, this is of a soldier. Also wood spindle, this one's about 1830. And you can see the soldier marches back and forth with the escapement. So as the pendulum swings, he marches between the tower to the right and the cannon to the left. And he does a 180 at the end of his march and marches back in the opposite direction. The next clock here, it's a flute clock made in the Black Forest in the early part of the 19th century. Wood spindle movement, the musical train and the strike train are powered by ropes. And this is the earlier style where the movement for the clockworks and the, the flute mechanism is in a single clockwork style housing. And this clock's quite small. You can see in proportion to even just the normal shield clock next to it. It's very small and dainty for a musical clock. The clock plays six tunes on, uh, I believe, 15 pipes, 14 or 15 pipes. Um, also, you can see the bellows are located above the pen music wheel located at the back of the movement uh, above the plate. So really an unusual uh, configuration there for the pneumatics of, of that clock. Uh, here we have a rooster clock by Emilian Worley. This clock was made uh, about 1890, and it's in a really nice neoclassical style case. The rooster calls uh, three times one at the top of the hour. And uh, this clock runs for eight days, has a heavy little brass plate movement in it. And we're waiting to hang this clock. Uh, you can see it also has its uh, original matching bracket. So that's a beautiful clock and a uh, little rearranging. We'll find a spot for it on the wall. Clock next to it, this is a rat eater. 
This was made about 1870 in the Black Forest. <clears throat> and you can see the figure on the top is in a French military uniform. His hat has an eagle with a crown on it, which is uh, generally used to represent Napoleon. And uh, Napoleon was mocked in the early days uh, with satires using rats. And you can see that this uh, French soldier here shovels three rats into his mouth, uh, eyes and all, at the top of each hour. Uh, this clock is probably going to be recognized by most people. It's heavily documented. Uh, it was documented in Rick Wurtenberger's book, Black Forest Clocks. It was also part of the 1986 National uh, NAWCC convention. There was a display on Black Forest Clocks. It was, it was documented and displayed there in the 80s. And uh, anyway, we have a pedigree on this clock that goes back to the 1950s. Uh, it's been in some very prominent Black Forest Clock collections. Just an excellent piece. Clock runs for eight days, and uh, the automation happens once every ten minutes. Summer clock here. We have King Gambrius on the top of the case. Pours himself a drink, and then raises the chalice to his mouth. And he does that uh, every ten minutes or on demand. Uh, and that clock uh, also runs for eight days on the time side. It's a really nice uh, Black Forest uh, shelf clock with uh, a large automated figure on the top. Moving over to the wall over here, uh, here we have a beautiful gothic uh, shelf, uh, beautiful gothic cuckoo clock with a monk automation. You just see the detail work in this case, the four full columns, the carved finials, just the gothic elements. Really beautiful clock. It's uh, one one of the favorite in, in the collection as far as. Uh, just, just the display. I really like this gothic style uh, architecture. Cuckoo calls the hour like a traditional clock. And then at 6 a.m. noon and 6 p.m. the large double doors open. And the bell ringer appears. And his arms go up and down as he pulls the rope. Uh, as, as the clock strikes the Angelus. So the repetitious call to prayer. The clock was made by Johann Baptist Biha. We actually have... Uh, copies in our archives of the original drawings of this exact clock. This is not a catalog clock. There's no catalog number applied to it. And uh, we have the exact drawings done by Lorenz Biha uh, in, in the 1870s. And, and they are signed by Lorenz Biha as well. Here we just have a little railroad style cuckoo. This is a period example, 1860. Has about a seven inch enamel dial. You can just see the detail work is just uh, fantastic. This is an example of really a cuckoo clock that can be quite simple, yet very detailed at the same time. Uh, just a really classic form uh, that would go on to really transform the, the Black Force clock industry, especially the, with the cuckoo clock makers. Quickly go up top here, we have a wood wheel cuckoo clock uh, with a flat front paper shield. This is one of the first cuckoo clocks made in the Black Forest. Uh, every gear in the movement is made out of wood, except the escape wheel, which is brass. The escape wheel rises through the top plate of the, pendul of, of the movement, and the, 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 the crutch is, is outside the plate of the movement. It's located above the top plate, uh, true to the early style. And this clock was made about 1780. So it was a very early cuckoo clock. Uh, going across the top shelf, uh, we have a cuckoo clock made by Johann Baptist Biha, shelf cuckoo, eight-day double fusing movement, beautiful oil painting on zinc, the painting of two children looking up at a tree with a cuckoo in the tree was done by Karl Heine, a very famous Neustadt painter. That clock's about 1870. Uh, another Biha, eight-day double fusy shelf cuckoo, ebonized case. The dial is alabaster, and it has really delicate uh, enamel cartouches, which are set in little embossed brass bezels. And you can see the case has extensive inlays of zinc and brass, which is chased uh, to create a really floral motif. A very high quality clock. The front door actually locks with a key. Just a great piece. Here we have a period uh, Black Forest Peddler. About 1860, 1850s, he's made out of zinc. 
The whole thing's hand formed, so each piece is, is an individual. They each have their own character to them. And uh, he's hollow, he stands on a wood base. And this example's complete with everything, normally missing. He has all his little pendulums in his hand. The pendulum on the little clock is present. The clock on the back is present. That lifts up to hold the key. And the paint is untouched. This is his original paint. He hasn't been touched up, uh, which, which is great. We've owned several examples, but we, we've kept this guy just because of how original he is. Here we have a shelf cuckoo made by Johann Baptist Bihai, Ike Double Fusee, about 1860. Ebonized case, it has inlays of zinc, brass, colored turtle shell. It has a zinc dial with enamel cartouches, also set in embossed brass bezels. Just a really fancy, beautiful clock. The cuckoo bird is about 50% larger than a traditional plump cuckoo. So it has an oversized bird. And what really makes this clock special is there's a small oil painting in the base of a rabbit and a hunting dog and an eye from each figure moves with the swing of the pendulum. So although you're going to find this eye turner type automation in black forest clocks, it's quite common. To find it in a shelf clock is quite rare. And uh, just because of the case and the oversized bird and the condition, uh, this is one of her favorite beehives in the collection. The last one there on the end is also made by Johann Baptist Beha. No cuckoo in this clock, but there is a small oil painting up in the upper pediment uh, of, a, of a rodent and a dog, and the eyes move back and forth as the pendulum swings. Uh, Beha Records have confirmed this is one of the earliest double fusee cuckoos that Beha made. Uh, this clock was made in 1849 and was sold new on the 1st of January, 1850. So just a really early piece, uh, eight-day double fusee movement, just, just a beautiful clock. Let's quickly moving across here, here's a Black Forest miniature, wood plate movement, uh, nice little carvings. Here we have an original wood cut, a uh, little piece of artwork showing a peddler in an organ clock shop. And there we have a little sword, Rope Drive, 1830. Uh, needs restoration, but uh, definitely a little rare clock. Uh, just some more art, and then we'll drop down to the, to the, to the clocks. Uh, here we have a photograph of a delivery wagon of Kammer Cuss. It's a horse-drawn carriage, and Kammer Cuss retailed, uh, was one of Biha's, he was the largest retailer for Johann Baptist Biha. And here we have a, a photograph as well of the trumpeter clock factory of Emilian Worley in Furtwagen, Germany. Here we have an apostle clock by Gordian Hedick and Son. You can see this clock uh, has two large turrets with a balcony connecting the two doors. And on the hour, the 12 apostles parade across the balcony from one tower to the other as three hammers strike three gongs in rapid succession. This is a pretty nice clock. Uh, you don't see these too often. This exact clock is also documented in Rick Ortenberg's book, Black Forest Clocks. It does need restoration, some work to the case, some finials, and uh, it's next in line within six months. We'll have this back to its uh, original form. Next here we have a soldier clock with a cuckoo. It's a shelf clock in the form of a, uh, of a castle or a fortress. And you can see that the soldier marches back and forth between the two columns as the pendulum swings. And this example also has a cuckoo which calls on the hour and the half hour in the upper part of the case. Uh, this clock is made about 1890, uh, 1880, just right at the end of the 19th century. This next one's called an owl clock. We chased this one for years. Uh, when this clock was purchased, we, we never seen another owl or heard of an original example anywhere. Since we have found another one in Germany, a wall model. But uh, instead of like a cuckoo clock, there's a three and a half inch figure of an owl that appears through the double doors. And an owl calls, uh, calls the hour. Just a really unusual clock, uses one large uh, bellow to, to do that. Um, so it's very rare, very, very few of these were produced. Next, we have a Magician Automaton. It's unrestored, but uh, just a really ex nice example of a rare clock, like the King Drinker, like the Rat Eater and the Dumpling Eater. 
The magician comes to life on the hour, raises and lowers the cups, and under the cups, different tricks appear and disappear and change as he puts on his magical show. Here we have a shelf cuckoo clock. This was made by Samuel Kammerer of Furtwagen. And uh, just, just a fantastic clock, very unusual. This clock has the largest movement that we've ever seen in a cuckoo clock. It's a triple fusee solid brass plate movement that's equally, equally as large as any movement we've ever seen in even a trumpeter clock. And also what makes this clock so unusual is the cuckoo and quail are exposed. They're not behind doors, they're extremely large and oversized, and uh, they sit on the top of the clock. So the cuckoo calls the hour, the quail calls the quarters, and uh, it's just one of the finest examples of a cuckoo quail we've ever seen. Uh, let's start at the floor, then we'll kind of go up the wall on the other side. Uh, this is a flute clock by Emilian Worley, and the case is just exquisitely carved. It's 50 inches tall from the base to the top. Four relief animals are just all over the place. Ibexes up top, birds at the bottom, holly, berry. Uh, the clock will play one of two pre-selected tunes on the hour on eight wood pipes. And as the uh, organ plays, two uh, flute clock figures appear behind their, their double doors. Just kind of below here, we have uh, just lots of books and literature. And uh, there's a clock awaiting restoration. It's a little rope drive cuckoo clock from about 1820. Okay, as we go up the wall over here, uh, here we have a singing bird clock by Emilian Worley. Eight day triple wine, so it's time, strike, and music with the bird. And a beautiful ebonized and ebony case, ebony and walnut, excuse me, case. And it has gold uh, highlights and decoration. You can see the, uh, the feathered songbird sits on the upper pagoda. He comes to life on the hour. And uh, there's a great video on this clock if you check out our, our, our YouTube channel and on our website. You can see that bird sing and see this clock in action. Here we have a very small miniature early Black Forest clock, rope drive. Uh, this clock makes a sorg look big. And it has a really unusual alarm mechanism with three hands and, and a little cam wheel that operates it. Just a great clock and you could also check this out on our website if you're into early Black Forest miniatures. Uh, undergoing restoration, but a, but a great clock. This is an early wood wheel Black Forest clock. So all the gears in the movement are wood, other than the escape wheel, just like that early cuckoo we showed you. Uh, this was made at the end of the 18th century. This clock has its original lacquered shield. It's one of the first lacquered shields ever made. And you can see the shield design really took the Black Forest clock uh, just to a different level. The colors are more vibrant, the shield's much more eye-appealing than the more primitive paper shield. So while we have a more modern shield, the movement is still very primitive. It's wood wheels, all the gears are wood. And uh, we'll get the camera on the back side, you can see it actually also strikes on a glass bell. So it's a wood wheel glass bell shield, very primitive, uh, yet it has a more modern style uh, shield with the lacquered shield on the front. So this is 1780, 1790, right in that time period. And, uh, it's a great example. Um, we're having some work done to its hands uh, currently. Here we have a nice railroad style uh, cuckoo clock with an uh, oil painting on zinc. And the painting is just fantastic. It shows two children bird catchers, uh, sticks in their hand trying to flush the cuckoo out of the tree. And the hunter's on the left side with his rifle ready. And you can see the cuckoo appears. Uh, through that small little door in the upper part of the broken tree. Just a, a real beautiful cuckoo clock and an excellent example of uh, a ten plate cuckoo. You can see the case also has little inlays of brass into the uh, fine burl veneer. Okay, we're going to go across the top here. Uh, in the far left hand corner we have an automa clock. It's a blacksmith automa. And this is a really unusual clock. Uh, it has a cutout in the picture frame, in the painting, which is done on zinc. The painting shows a workshop with a water wheel on the river. And in the upper cutout, there's a wood figure that's been painted of a, of a large blacksmith, 
And then on the opposite side, there's a smaller blacksmith figure, and both of them straddle an anvil, which is also carved from wood and painted. And how the clock works is as the pendulum ticks, the small figure in the back lightly pings a small hammer on the anvil once for each swing of the pendulum. And then when the hour strikes, the large blacksmith up front, uh, two hands on his large sledgehammer, uh, pounds the anvil in sequence with the strike to the gong. So this is done about 1860, and it's a transitional piece between the shield automa and then the later picture frame style clocks, which you really lose those wood carved four relief 3D type figures that are found in the cutouts of the shield. So that's a nice clock on multiple levels because you not only have automation with the time train, you also have them in the strike train. And you have the earlier style four relief automa with the later style painting in the frame. The next one there is a cuckoo clock by Johann Baptist Biha. It's also in a nice frame, oil painting on zinc of a hunting scene. And you can see the hunting dog and the hair below the dial, and eye will move in each figure as the pendulum swings. And then the cuckoo bird appears through the small hidden door within the tree. This has a wood plate 50 hour movement, and this clock was made in the late 1850s. Another early uh, eye turner clock you can see uh, also in a frame, wood plate movement. You can see the detail in the paintings of the sheep and the goat and the herder. And the eyes of the herder look left to right as the pendulum swings. Here we have a little miniature sword. This is actually signed by the Joseph Sword. And you can see how small this clock is. Uh, it's three and a half inches high, wood plate movement, rope drive, time and alarm. Another sorger in a beautiful uh, Biedemeyer style case. And this clock is also time and strike. This clock uses a, uh, a single weight, which is ran between the two trains on a pulley. Really quickly down below, here we have a cuckoo clock. The case is carved out of a single piece of wood. It was made by Johann George Biha. Just the detail work in this is just fantastic. This isn't your normal cuckoo clock. As I said, the case is carved out of a single block of wood, hollowed out from the back that accepts the wood plate movement. And Johann George Biha is a distant relative to Johann Baptist Biha. And uh, records also show that Johann Baptist Biha actually uh, took Johann George under his, under his wing and uh, trained him in the art of cuckoo clock making. I'm just going to end the video here with just some literature. Uh, here we have a calling card from Emilian Worley. This is an original card that shows the uh, trumpeter of Sackigan, all the awards. Beautiful color and script. This would have been handed out as an, as an exposition or at a fair. Uh, you know, just the market, uh, Emilian Worley and his musical clocks. And on there it mentions trumpeter, flute, singing bird. Here we have an original photograph of a gentleman standing next to a, a large trumpeter clock on a bracket. And here's a letter uh, signed and written uh, by the hand of Emilian Worley on factory letterhead and is dated 1868. Up top is a photo of the Aryan Choir in Furtwagen, Germany. And in the photo you can see Emilian, his father-in-law Franz Safer and Julian, all responsible parties for running the uh, trumpeter clock factory in, in Furtwagen, Germany. So there's an overview of, uh, of, of the collection here uh, in this room. We hope you enjoyed it. For more details, check us out on our website, which is blackforestclocks.org.